Thank you very much. First of all, I want to, to thank you very much for that invitation. I'm very proud of being here and to introduce this. And uh, I think the, the, the framework I like very much as a countercultural uh, framework to deal with uh, um, a topics uh, which is not uh, an academical uh, one. Uh, the European crisis and uh, within the global one uh, which is going on uh, at the present time um, could be, of course, dealt with in an academical way. Uh, but it's not the point of view I will uh, develop uh, here, of course. Um, the, I'm involved in um, all kinds of uh, uh, non-governmental uh, associations of uh, uh, intellectual and social resistance uh, to the uh, dominant policy which are implemented today and also among economists. I'm involved in a network of uh, French and European economists uh, which are uh, of course very diverse uh, and have no uh, clear-cut uh, single uh, unified answer on what to do. But they uh, share one very simple one very simple uh, statement and uh, methodological and political uh, uh, statement, uh, which is uh, to consider that uh, there are alternative choices. Um, Margaret Thatcher uh, wanted to impose its, uh, you know, Tina, uh, there is no alternative. Um, and in the ongoing European uh, crisis, uh, there is also an ideological uh, fight uh, precisely to, to win margin of uh, intellectual and therefore also uh, social resistance, social resistance and therefore intellectual resistance, both articulated, to the dominant presentation what is presented as a sovereign debt crisis, and to the answer to this, where Greece is supposed to have received aid. Uh, and when you look at the uh, uh, situation of Greece today, it's uh, worse than it was in 2009, and it's real poison. It's a poison not only for Greece people, Greek people, uh, but it's uh, with a really uh, much more international, European and international issues. So, uh, I want to deal with that European uh, uh, crisis with uh, an alternative interpretation. It's not a crisis of the debt, it's more precisely the debt of the crisis, in a way. Uh, it's uh, not um, um, uh, something to be solved by the ongoing plans. Uh, which are, uh, on the contrary, I will argue, to be um, resisted and rejected. But this is a matter of the discussion. In order to present that uh, European situation, you see, like in, uh, when you look at uh, Impressionist painting, you must not be too, too close. Um, so it's uh, really uh, uh, an intellectual uh, necessity uh, to take some uh, historical uh, global outlook, both on historical issues, economical issues, methodological aspects of, so, or, of course also uh, behind the crisis. So that's why I divided the, the lecture into parts, which are articulated, uh, some uh, aspect of the global outlook behind, with, what is a global crisis, a systemic uh, crisis, um, and uh, uh, European specificities. Uh, I don't share those who deal with the European Union simply as a market or as capitalism in general. It's historically specified, and uh, it opens uh, margin for political intervention uh, and social resistance uh, in a specific context. That's why we need the, the two, the two parts. I ask uh, you to, 
uh, moderate me, that is to tell me when I'm too long, in order to have time enough for the discussion. Yeah. And because I know we have not so much time, uh, I will uh, have to shorten, I think, what I intended to, uh, to develop. Uh, so I'm sorry uh, to be uh, too short uh, in many aspects, uh, but I hope the discussion will permit. And I will stay also up to uh, Sunday and share with you the other topics and listen to other intervention and discussions. So, um, if it works... Yeah, uh, the global outlook, I, I will uh, uh, put emphasis on two aspects, anatomy of the system and historical aspects. Uh, anatomy of the system uh, uh, is something very important to, to deal with. Uh, there again, I said in the very beginning, there is an intellectual fight for words and interpretation. Uh, especially in Eastern Europe, well, the, the word, uh, the concept, the notion of market has been used uh, in a very abstract way to say transition towards market economy. But what is market economy? And uh, those who defend market economy precisely want to have such abstract way to deal with market without precising what kind of market. Market for what? And, uh, um, and I keep uh, very strongly in a non domatic way but very strong uh, way from Marx the uh, decisive uh, methodological uh, uh, aspect which is to go uh, uh, behind economic category uh, categories like market prices but also planning and uh, property uh, and look at what are the social relationships, uh, who is ruling, and what are the criteria. And, uh, so, of course, there, were, there was a market before capitalism, and there could be, and there was some market uh, in non-capitalist, and there could be uh, some market in non-capitalist society. But what has been the specificity is we speak of the anatomy of a capitalist, of a pure, let us say, capitalist system, um, and when the capitalist system is, uh, conf is not confronted with strong resistance, it's becoming very pure. Uh, and uh, the, the, the kind of system we have today is an illustration of that. That is the, 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 the trends uh, in its essence to generalize markets. So market domination in all fields. Uh, which is labor market, financial market, service and goods, and the generalization uh, of market rules means also generalization of competition, so privatization, as a condition for uh, generalization of competition. A uh, second uh, aspect for those who uh, are accustomed to reading uh, Marx, you know that there are two kind of different a market cycle, which are described by, by Marx. Here, when I put M, C, M, M prime, what does it mean? Uh, money, commodity, and uh, money prime. What does it mean? That is, behind market, there is money. But in a non-capitalist market, let's say like that, uh, the money can be a tool under control, under regulation, but a tool to help decentralize decision making, let's say to buy bread, or to prefer to go to theater, or to go, or to buy some uh, uh, Slibovica instead of books, or I, I don't know. So uh, a, a kind of market for goods, and a kind of money uh, to help decentralize uh, decision making can be used, combined with, um, collective instrument of regulation, <coughs> transparency behind prices, and so on. But in, that, in such a context, the money is, a, uh, is a, a tool to facilitate some exchanges. But in the capitalist system, money transformed into capital. What does it mean? Uh, it means a complete, complete uh, uh, other kind of social relationship behind money, and the aim of using money. money Commodity, 
M, M Monet commodity M prime M prime the other uh, Monet at the end of the cycle must be uh, 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 more important than the first one that is surplus value precisely profit monetary profit whatever and what is commodity in between that is the pure capitalist essence. Commodity can be anything. Uh, the necessity to make a profit accumulation, monetary profit accumulation, um, as a, 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 a goal, a name, and a, a mechanism of the whole system in its anatomy, um, is whatever be the cost, whatever be the social cost and environmental cost. That is, C, the commodity in which there is money invested, can be a human being, can be a part of woman body, can be commodity, but can be also uh, what is called securities, that is, financial, uh, financial uh, paper, uh, can be currency, uh, can be anything, uh, whatever be the effect, the impact, of that so-called investment in commodity uh, in order to have a surplus of money at the end, uh, it is uh, the goal. Uh, so uh, the uh, money as a capital to be accumulated at any cost is a pure capitalist anatomy. And of course, resistance to that, to that deals with uh, historical transformation. I'll come back. But the, each system, uh, as the, the crisis of its uh, anatomy, and when a, a system, uh, the capitalist system, is based on that kind of anatomy, uh, what, is, what are the kind of uh, crises uh, which can occur uh, uh, based on that anatomy? Uh, some economists uh, put emphasis, uh, liberal ones, on supply side uh, cost. Uh, aspect. It is too costful, so there is a crisis. Uh, some other uh, economists like uh, Keynes, uh, Keynesians, put emphasis on demand, that is not enough uh, uh, purchase power. Uh, uh, because when you have the cycle M, C, M prime, uh, of course, in order to get M prime uh, above M, that is a, a, a profit, you need to sell. So the demand aspect is important, but you need to sell with a surplus, so the cost aspect is important. And the Marxist view I would share, uh, in fact, would put the emphasis on the articulation of both aspects. Some Marxists, there is a debate, and perhaps you have followed <coughs> this internationally, some Marxists uh, consider that it's only a question of profits so the, 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 the supply, behind the surplus side, there is the cost and there is the profit. But it, there is never uh, a, a crisis of, uh, uh, on the surplus side, let us say, on the cost aspect, uh, without, uh, without uh, articulation uh, with the other uh, aspect, the demand and vice versa. So in history, there have been different kind of scenario uh, an articulation, but both aspects are uh, linked with the anatomy of the system and with its main contradiction. Uh, second uh, type of discussion, uh, what kind of crisis uh, are we confronted? Is there an, an autonomy of the financial, uh, uh, financial development versus a kind of good capitalism? Uh, which would be uh, based on uh, productive uh, investment uh, only. That is, that in the cycle MC M prime, there was too much financial financial market, but not uh, not regulation. Uh, uh, I would uh, oppose also uh, such kind of uh, uh, interpretation. Uh, that is not to say. Uh, that there are no different kind of historical phases in capitalist system, and that, of course, we'll come back to that in the in the post Second World War uh, period. The capitalist uh, system in the core country tended to regulate because of the big crisis in the in the war uh, period. 
tended to regulate a little bit uh, uh, the financial uh, dimension. It is absolutely true that uh, that system, that capitalist system, was more regulated. But uh, that does not mean that there is a separation between financial dimension and so-called real economy. There is an articulation. And uh, uh, even if in some period the financial development can appear as separate from the real uh, uh, pro productive economy, a bubble, uh, a financial bubble exists, but it collapses at the moment and has to come back to real uh, uh, capitalism. And um, the, the real nature of it is, is that uh, orientation, whatever be the cost, the uh, capital accumulation, this is immoral uh, in us as such. Uh, so there are historical uh, scenario of different crises, which means that we need, and sorry it's in French, but uh, only to make some uh, indication, to have in mind that there are big historical period. In the second, uh, this, the, uh, this deals with uh, something that perhaps you have heard about, of course, that Kondratiev kind of long, uh, long wave, the long phase of capitalist development. Ernest Mandel, if you know about him also, has developed the idea of long wave of capitalist development. The idea is that in the concrete historical development of capitalism, there have been long phases of, let's say, in the, in the middle, it's uh, 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 more uh, phases of growth than of recessions, let's say, and more stable uh, part. And in the, in the uh, last uh, <coughs> column, it's a more structural uh, phase of crisis. Only to, to stress that uh, in the end of 19th century, uh, you had a very long phase of depression, a structural uh, depression. And uh, that is uh, uh, the end of the, 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 at the end of the century, what was the answer of the capitalist system? It was not technical. It was not purely economical. It was a new wave of colonial expansion. And it was in that phase that there was the introduction by the core country, and especially Great Britain at that time, which was uh, the dominating, the introduction of the international division of labor between core and peripheral countries uh, in, in order to solve the question of cost uh, crisis in the core countries. That is, uh, capitalism has always been international. And the kind of anatomy I, I described before leads to crisis in the core countries, and it is in order to solve the crisis, systemic crisis in the core country, that there's expansions. And the type of uh, uh, colonial expansion at the end of the 19th century, um, with uh, liberal speeches, so called neoli at that time, first liberal kind of speeches of of, of uh, uh, discourse, like today, uh, in a different context, was an answer to the crisis of that period. Uh, a second remark, the, sec the, 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 the next big systemic crisis, that is between the two world wars, between the two world wars, which was a, a really systemic crisis with fascism, with uh, uh, the big uh, uh, in, in, in uh, term uh, with the, the big crisis of financial financial system, the gold exchange uh, system, and so on, uh, finished into another second uh, in the Second World War. So there again, it's not a technical answer uh, that the capitalists gave to its crisis, huh? uh, but a new config uh, configuration of world orders with two with also. Uh, in between, and because of uh, the crisis of the, the core <coughs> countries and their own fights together in wars, revolutions, which occurred in the first, uh, in the first uh, World War and in the Second World War with extension in China and so on. So, last uh, period. My uh, interpretation, uh, and, and I will develop that, is that um, the, the key uh, period of interpretation of what is going on today is uh, um, the new crisis, systemic crisis, which occurred in, at the end of the 60s and in the 70s. 
it, it of course didn't take uh, the, the same form, catastrophical form, uh, than it did in between the two wars, uh, world wars. Uh, but still it was a systemic and international crisis <coughs> of the people our world, with a new generation, not only in France, <laughs> I was involved in that, in the, uh, as a dinosaur <laughs> uh, in 68, uh, 68 uh, was not only French, huh? it, it was also the, the Vietnamese uh, resistance, it was in Mexico, it was in Czechoslovakia, it was in Yugoslavia, it was in the whole world, in the three, <coughs> and, uh, 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 and uh, uh, a big crisis, a combination of crisis of profit and crisis of uh, uh, hegemony uh, uh, of uh, uh, United States at that period and so on. Uh, and uh, I put a question mark, there is a question mark, what happened after that? And there is a debate, uh, uh, can we interpret the 80s as a phase of growth and of stabilization, uh, uh, or is it within uh, a, a global phase of crisis, uh, 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 an attempt to solve that systemic crisis and, that, and without a uh, positive result of stabilization. And I will answer with the second interpretation. <coughs> so uh, uh, I uh, put now the current crisis, so in uh, its uh, <coughs> historical perspective, as I just said, uh, its origins, I put them in the structural crisis of the 70s, which, with the both aspects, profit crisis and crisis of the world order, with a new generation fighting against all kind of hierarchy, uh, be it in, in the East or in the West. Uh, the conservative counter-revolution, which is called neoliberalism, um, is an, answer, an attempt to answer to this. Uh, and the fact that the, the crisis was also a crisis of the domination of the United States permits us to understand why the United States took the initiative and it had, it had tools for that, even international institutions uh, like, uh, uh, like the financial institutions, NATO and so on, to take the initiative uh, to recover hegemony which it was losing at the time. Um, so, um, the, what were the aims and uh, characteristics uh, 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 of the neoliberal phase, in, in short, it has been uh, often summarized as the Washington consensus uh, kind of <laughs> recipes and so on. Uh, but I, I cannot develop all aspects because I have to center on Europe and come very soon on European issues. Uh, I said it was a combined issue, cost, that is profit aspect, uh, profit aspect, cost, what is behind? Oil, energy. And you can think about what we will not deal with here, but the oil issues in international politics and wages, and this will be our uh, main issue here. Wages as a cost, not as human being behind wages. Uh, and uh, an, uh, a wage uh, under the period of uh, uh, the post-Second uh, World War, uh, under Keynesian kind of uh, state regulation, and <coughs> under the pressure of bipolar, war, uh, bipolar world, uh, wage in the core country, in the core capitalist country, was not considered only as a cost in the capitalist system for the first time of his history. Wage was also considered as a purchase, as a uh, uh, d'achat, purchase power. Uh, Fordism hmm, uh, was a concept elaborated to describe that, uh, that aspect, that the, the idea that the, the workers in the Ford factories uh, were not only uh, costful, <laughs> and uh, with the pressure in, in order to increase profits <coughs> against wages. But with their wages, if you share the um, increase of productivity between profit and wages, wages could then become a purchase power for cars. And 
globally increased profits uh, uh, for the system and with very high cost. But then the neoliberal program was to suppress this uh, dual dimension of wage. And this is the international program that is flexibility on labor force, competition, and international competition in order precisely uh, to uh, recover uh, the domination of wage labor uh, uh, and uh, press it uh, in order that the distribution of added value comes back in favor of the, uh, of the profit. There was also the crisis of the world order, uh, I said, and so the main, the aims were uh, to dismantle all protections uh, in, in labor codes and national uh, uh, frontiers, of course, and the, uh, all kind of uh, uh, laws uh, of collective uh, regulation and uh, uh, criminalization of resistance, all means are good, to re-establish the salaries as costs. And, um, uh, of course, the offensive against trade unions by Margaret Thatcher and the destruction of welfare states in the US was the first uh, battle, which was uh, then generalized. Um, and the second aspect I will not deal uh, with here is, of course, the control of energy resources with all the ecological, environmental aspect, but also, of course, the question of uh, so-called wars, um, so-called um, <coughs> wars of civilization, uh, which are, in fact, uh, generally and often for energy. The means uh, for um, uh, those aims was uh, the free global competition through extension, generalization, I say, pure capitalism of the market, using technological revolution for that issue, Financ uh, uh, the, 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 the financial market uh, and free flow of capital uh, to make pressure uh, on uh, labor force, flexibility of labor in labor codes, privatization, it is implemented in Greece today. That was the aim that was not sufficiently implemented and that has to be implemented up to the end uh, by the, those in power now in Europe through the aid of International Monetary Fund, World Bank, uh, World Trade Organization, and European Union institution we will deal with afterwards. Of course, there are also the issues of the wars, so-called preemptive wars, but I will not uh, deal with that. The effects uh, of all these politics, briefly, well, the aim to restore the, uh, the rate of profit uh, to the profit uh, is the upper uh, line. The rate of profit has been restored, but the rate of accumulation behind uh, is uh, very uh, low. So that uh, a very specific, uh, fig uh, a specific uh, scenario in capitalist history. In general, in the, in the, in the first period, that is in the 60s, 70s, uh, the uh, accumulation, that is, investment policies, goes in a very uh, uh, parallel way with profits. But there you have increasing profit, but not investment. Why? Because precisely of financial development. Uh, slowing down of material uh, investment, but strong increase in financial <coughs> investment. Uh, and. Um, uh, for instance, in US, 21% uh, of uh, GDP. Financial investment uh, increase uh, led also to increasing unemployment because it's uh, uh, not <coughs> enough precisely uh, productive, uh, productive investment. So there is a, a correlation between the development of that kind of financial accumulation and uh, increasing organic structural unemployment with before the crisis, before the, the 2007 crisis, uh, unemployment which was near uh, to 10 percent, near to 10 percent in several countries, uh, in core countries, uh, especially in, 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 uh, in Europe. Um, there, here you have a specific uh, 
uh, uh, um, presentation of what is the part of salaries in U United States and European Union. Uh, the third uh, brown uh, cor uh, uh, curve, 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 yes, is European Union. Uh, here you have, I, I put uh, some uh, minutes here because it's uh, very interesting. The first curve, curve is United States globally. It seems that the, it is, what, it, what does it represent? It represents the part of wages in the GDP because in added value, added values is GDP. Huh? The, the, so the, it seems that, first of all, if you compare US and European Union, it's a higher uh, share of wages and it, seem, it seems more stable. But if you suppress 1%, only 1% of the richest people who receive wages in the United States, you already come to the second curve, already. And you, if, you, if you suppress, if you, uh, uh, yes, yeah, suppress 5%, only 5% of the richest people the, the last curve of US goes uh, uh, in, uh, under the U U European Union. That means that behind, I said we have to go behind a concept, but also behind data and behind what is presented as wage, behind wages and salaries. In fact, you have profit with hidden profits uh, through, the, uh, through the, the kind of uh, uh, um, uh, distribution which is given to uh, to the managers, in fact to the managers, which are not exactly wage owners. Um, so, now, the, the capitalist system, I said, th that was anatomy. I in order to have a surplus, you must sell. How can you sell when uh, uh, the huge part of the population is wage uh, uh, um, owners, and when wage, wages are decreasing? And the U.S. Uh, example is very significant of what, what occurred also in Spain, what occurred also in some other, uh, in, 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 in Eastern European countries uh, uh, often uh, also. That is, you have, um, let's say, the, 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 the share of, uh, uh, of wage, if you take the, uh, at least the second uh, uh, part, the part of wages, which decrease, at least which is not increasing, but which decrease. But consumption increased. And you remember, you must remember that before the crisis of 2007, the growth in the United States was presented as a huge result of a positive model. Consumption was one of the uh, uh, points uh, for growth. But how consumption could develop with decreasing, even if low decrease, but decreasing of wage, even with inequality, because of credits. That is, in between, consumption was supported by increasing credits in order to uh, permit um, precisely um, the district uh, to, to, to uh, maintain a certain growth. And uh, the, the global uh, result uh, of the whole system was because of fiscal policy, liberal fiscal policy in favor of uh, <laughs> a, a rich parts of the population, uh, the kind of so-called wage for increasing uh, uh, the, the part of the, the, the richest the, the people and so on, um, and the suppression of protection for uh, uh, workers uh, that you, uh, 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 you, you, you find for United States uh, just before the crisis of 2007, exactly the same kind of inequalities that were uh, in the 30s, that is before the, the big crisis of the 30s, <coughs> where you have, um, um, so uh, the, uh, come back to the beginning of the 20th century, that is uh, one uh, fifth of the income uh, are going, that is the low part, one fifth of the income uh, for one percent of the population, one third for five percent, and forty-five percent uh, for uh, for the rest. So I must uh, hurry a little bit up to summarize. Um, uh, uh, I'm, I must say that the, the, the global system, uh, you see, rising uh, profit was the aim. So lower wages, 
but combined with a free uh, flow of, of capital. And uh, uh, the uh, uh, financial deregulation permitted to develop fields, new fields of investment, bubbles, uh, with hyper profitability of short term, <coughs> short term profitability, much more profitability than in productive sector, and the illusion uh, that uh, financial uh, profitability could develop without limits, without limits in all bubbles. Um, and uh, so uh, pressure uh, also for uh, social inequalities in uh, global competition uh, and uh, 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 the global uh, system uh, led to instability. So at the beginning I, I, I said, uh, uh, how do we interpret the period since the 70s up to now? Was it in the, is it true that in the 80s, because of neoliberal new kind of accumulation, you had a, a stable system? Here, to remind you some dates, um, uh, or in the 80s, it was for the uh, Latin America, uh, the lost decades. Huh? Uh, but, and uh, already stock market crash. But let us look at the 90s already. In the 90s, and this is a link with what I will say just af afterwards for European. In the 1992, uh, there was a European very dark, very sharp recession and speculation with uh, Soros speculating on certain <laughs> currencies. Uh, and uh, in that framework, you had also the Maastricht Treaty towards, uh, going towards the European Union. Uh, the 90s was a decade for core countries, so the crisis in European Union, crisis uh, in Japanese, 90s, huh? before the, the 2007. Um, uh, end of the 80, 90, 98, crisis in Asia and Russia, but 2001, NASDAQ, you know NASDAQ is uh, the, the new technology uh, financial system, so the, the core system in US, and in that framework, in 2001, uh, the Fed, that is the central bank of the uh, United States, decided uh, before also, and in the framework uh, uh, context of recession, increased by uh, the, um, uh, 11, uh, the, the September 11th or so uh, events, uh, it, it decided to um, introduce very low interest rate. The low interest rate uh, introduced by the uh, US uh, um, uh, Central Bank, that is the Fed, has an international effect. Mm -hmm. huh? uh, there are lots of <laughs> credits which are articulated with the interest rate of the Fed. And what is called the subprime <coughs> credits in US are credits given to poor uh, households, poor uh, families, uh, with a middle or low uh, level of income, uh, that is with some risk, huh? but uh, in the framework, in the context of uh, the Fed decision in front of the recession uh, to have a low interest rate, the interest rate on uh, real estate at that time was very low and attractive uh, for, uh, for poor people. Um, to five, uh, 2005 and six, the crisis, new buy bubbles, the bubbles of uh, uh, real estate, but the bubbles of material, of oil, housing bubble, and so on. And then the crisis of the subprime, and peripheral crisis in East in uh, 2009, European sovereign crisis. What, what do I want to, to say only by this enumeration? That it is not true that the, um, uh, neoliberal uh, policy stabilized anything, uh, neither in the 90s, before the crisis. And the level of unemployment, the level of inequalities, the level of instability, the level of financial instability in the whole period was always very important. But, but, they thought they could uh, contain uh, each separate <coughs> crisis because they, they could contain each separate crisis. And in, 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 in each uh, specific context, 
uh, there were uh, new um, innovation, financial innovation, to reduce so-called risk. For whom? For those, for the financial investors, huh? always. And this, so in, in front of each uh, uh, crisis, they innovate a kind of uh, financial uh, constructions which uh, was supposed to distribute the risk. The idea was, if you distribute the risk, it minimizes it. But it was exactly the opposite. And which permits to understand that a, a limited cries of the subprime in real estate in the US in 2007 became an international banking crisis because the financial constructions which has been built uh, uh, on the base of uh, those uh, financial uh, uh, credits uh, has been distributed in the whole banking system um, and uh, led to um, incapacity of the banks to um, uh, continue financing each other, to have confidence in each other, uh, and to uh, finance the economy, so international recession, and uh, 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 bailout of banking, uh, then peripheral crisis in the East and Southern Euro Europe, and sovereign crisis. We come back uh, to that now. So, uh, uh, globally, uh, in that uh, uh, different phases of the, of the system, how could we deal with the, uh, interpret the European, uh, what I call construction, institutional construction? So we must uh, deal with uh, steps, uh, phases, uh, uh, here, and with uh, a little bit of uh, comments on historical uh, issues behind those dates. Uh, first phase uh, is the post-World War uh, period. We, you must add in the picture and have in head uh, that we are in the international context of uh, bipolar, bipolar uh, um, competition. And uh, so you have that kind of capitalism, uh, I said before, which was more regulated with increase, in, increasing wages and so on. What about <laughs> Europe? Uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the institutional construction of the Rome Treaty in uh, uh, 1957, uh, the European uh, Economic uh, Community, which transformed in uh, uh, 92 uh, into, uh, with the Maastricht Treaty into European Union, so the, the European community, uh, during the, second, uh, the, the period after the Second World War, uh, was um, uh, mainly based on agricultural uh, policy, uh, but respected, completely respected at that time, uh, the general feature uh, of the world capitalist system in the core countries that I stressed before. That is, well, first there was uh, an international monetary uh, system based uh, on the hegemony of the US, that is the dollar, Bretton Woods, the dollar uh, uh, with its convertibility in gold, and uh, there was no uh, European uh, uh, monetary uh, system in the uh, European <coughs> community. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the role of the states uh, uh, for political economy in that period was dominant. Huh? Uh, then you come into the, the big the, the crisis of the 70s, uh, and I, I put a, a period up to uh, the uh, introduction of the euro in 1999. Um, so this uh, period was a, a period uh, not only uh, it was a period of international crisis of the monetary system. That is no more regulation of the monetary system. So in Europe. There was an attempt to answer to that uh, deregulation in, and introduce uh, a, a, a European uh, a monetary system. Uh, in 79, uh, it was, uh, so in, in between 73 and 79, some uh, difficulties. Uh, and in 79, they decided to get rid of the dollar as the uh, reference 
and to introduce the European Currency Unit, uh, EQ, European Currency Unit, as a, a collective uh, currency, official, not only, it was not a private currency, only of, uh, an official one, in order to try and stabilize the exchange rate between the uh, European currencies. Um, but this was uh, still up to uh, 86 in the context, up to 86 in the context where, so there was a combination of a European monetary uh, a system with an orientation with, which was still uh, putting emphasis on the role of national states. And uh, in 86, there is a qualitative, a qualitative a turning point in the institutional and economical uh, construction of uh, the European community, which is what was called the uh, Single European Act, uh, and white uh, uh, book, uh, which was negotiated, I put in memory uh, uh, the context, uh, 86 is uh, uh, after the neoliberal turn in uh, Great Britain and U US, huh? at the beginning of the 80s, but in France. In France, the, the turn occurred in, uh, under the so-called so Socialist Party. Um, uh, Mitterrand was in uh, power and uh, began uh, in, uh, in the first phase uh, uh, as a um, uh, Neo-Keynesian uh, policy and turned towards liberal policy in 82. 82, 83, that was the liberal turn of the French Socialist Party, which is decisive for European uh, decision making. Huh? And so a negotiation, uh, so before 86 turning point, there was a negotiation between France and Germany and others uh, to go towards a new uh, uh, orientation that is free flow of capital in Europe. That is a suppression of the state regulation and control. Huh? Uh, and uh, uh, so a financial, uh, a, a financial adaptation uh, to the neoliberal orientation. But I must stress the fact that in the very same time, you must remember also 86. 86, it's also the period where, and I, I, I want to argue that this construction is contradictory, uh, 86 is also a period uh, where the budget, the budget of the U European Union was increased, with structural funds increased. Why? 86, we are still before 89. <laughs> that is in the context of, in the context of bipolar, uh, bipolar competition, even in Europe. And we are in the period where in the end of the 70s, beginning of the 80s, Greece, Spain, and Portugal went out of dictatorship and uh, the policy of uh, the European leaders, uh, especially the, the French uh, one, was to try to attract those southern uh, European countries to the European Union uh, when some, uh, some uh, <coughs> even socialist, uh, let's speak of uh, Portugal in 73, not uh, so far, and so on, uh, when there, there was uh, still some uh, possibility of uh, uh, separate road, let's say. So they want to attract and integrate the southern country, which came out of dictatorship and which were poorest than the average uh, European uh, countries, and for that, they increased the budget uh, of European Union, uh, of what, is, what was not uh, uh, already called the European Union, but the co European Community. They increased the budget, uh, a structural fund, which was to help the less developed part of uh, the uh, Union, and to help them to integrate the future monetary union, which was in discussion. So, then you have uh, uh, 99, uh, 89, the fall of the Berlin Wall, in fact the uh, German unification, which is much more important. Um, 
And uh, this was not foreseen. This was not foreseen. We can come back in the discussion, the different uh, views of <coughs> US, uh, Great Britain, and France in front of that German unification. The US and Germany, the, the US and Britain want to push the unified Germany into NATO. The French want to push the unified Germany into the European Union and accept to get rid of the Deutschmark. So to accept the future uh, you, uh, you, uh, currency, uh, common currency which was under the discussion. And uh, um, this was a debate because the, 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 the German uh, uh, rulers and uh, banking uh, system and especially the central bank didn't want to get rid of uh, the uh, Deutsche Mark. And um, uh, uh, 92 uh, was the context which made the, 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 the term. That is the combination of a crisis, I said a recession in Europe and the negotiation of the Maastricht Treaty. It was a negotiation, especially between France and Germany, to, in order to uh, make the German rulers and uh, financial uh, uh, elites to accept to get rid uh, of the Deutsche Mark at the horizon of 99 and uh, build uh, together the monetary European um, uh, union and um, uh, so the criteria introduced in Maastricht which are very monetarist kind of criteria was a, 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 an answer where uh, an answer to the, the resistance of Germany to uh, get rid of uh, the, the, the Deutsche Mark we can uh, after the uh, 99 uh, introduction of the euro then you have a, a rush forward and eastward enlargement. Uh, I, I got very quickly because I'm already late. Uh, uh, but um, this is a very important point also to stress. Because what is the dominant speech which is said? The dominant speech is said, uh, says that the eastward enlargement is a success story. Is the con uh, concretization of a success story. And uh, I, I, my hypothesis is that it is exactly the opposite, in a way. Uh, why? I think it was the enlargement is not uh, because uh, uh, the East European countries developed in the way it was foreseen by liberals. Uh, it was exactly the opposite. There was increasing social discontent, increasing inequalities, increasing disillusions, and in order to support the more liberal oriented part of the population, they had to offer something. And they offered the integration in the European Union. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they also had to offer something in front of NATO intervention on the Kosovo issue. Because it was not popular in Eastern Europe uh, uh, population in general, and it was not a stabilization uh, uh, event. So, uh, this is the, the point. Um, then you had different phase of crisis. It seemed that uh, in Europe, first the banking crisis, which began in uh, US, immediately arrived in the uh, Western banking system uh, of uh, uh, Europe, and it seemed that Eastern European countries were uh, a bit protected uh, from uh, this financial elaboration. Uh, and then there was the relaunch plans, but already in 2008 and 9 in Hungary, in Baltic states and so on, you had in the so-called peripheral Eastern European countries, and then in Greece and Southern uh, uh, countries, the uh, crisis of the sovereign uh, debt. I have to hurry up. Um, so, if it, if, he, if it won't, it doesn't want to, yeah made uh, an error somewhere. Okay, so I will um, uh, make stress the contradiction, more analytical aspect of contradiction of European construction. That's my point of view. I would say that there are political dimensions versus neoliberal uh, market. Huh? Um, 
it's not NAFTA that is a, a, a North American free trade uh, agreement. It is a political construction. Uh, the proof of that is the introduction of a parliamentary election, even if it's not a real parliament, completely real parliament. But there are elections. Um, there is the, uh, the hope, at least, and the presentation, official presentation of European social model and, and cohesion. There is the uh, uh, official presentation of a union of equal states, not core countries peripheral. It is supposed to be equal. <coughs> and there are sharp negotiations for equality between small and, and bigger countries, richest and, and poorest countries. That's political uh, issues, not free market. Uh, there are structural funds. That is a budget. In the free trade, uh, you have no budget. What is the role of a budget? It is to try to help the less developed countries, precisely South Eastern European countries, uh, South countries, I mean, and Eastern European countries, uh, had the hope to be helped by uh, budgets. And so they have popular aspiration also for uh, get rid of wars, uh, of wars, and uh, inter the most developed part and the most democratic part uh, as far as uh, assets of the past, uh, of the world. Okay, but it is in contradiction with, uh, there is a, cent with what? There is a central core uh, power between France and Germany, uh, uh, alliance. Uh, but who is be behind France? Now it's uh, not uh, probably no more, it will be probably no more Sarkozy. And perhaps tomorrow it will be uh, not always uh, Merkel. So the, the, the issue, who is behind France and Germany, is a key political uh, uh, issue. Uh, and the, 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 the way uh, Sarkozy and Merkel uh, behave in, with the other uh, components of the Union is really ne, ne, neocolonial, huh? uh, is unacceptable, unacceptable for all the others. So there is non-legitimated but dominant uh, criteria and mechanism and institutions. The treaties have never been elaborated in a democratic way, and they are being changed in a non-democratic way. The market competition is there to introduce uh, what is the most unpopular. What is financing the so-called co uh, social cohesion? Priority to private funds, market competition, stability pact, so that is all those mechanisms which introduce uh, uh, the uh, encouragement to attract uh, 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 foreign investment with redu uh, flat tax and, and Slovenian <laughs> trade unions are permitted to, redu to, to resist to this uh, as opposed to uh, the other countries. And, uh, trade and in general, a redu reduction of wage as uh, the way to attract uh, 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 private capital. Uh, I have no time, I wanted to illustrate the, the slowing down of uh, uh, the taxes, the uh, privatization of the banking system with the uh, western and east uh, aspect, perhaps in the discussion I will come back. I will go uh, very quickly in the fact that the result of that was an increase <laughs> of inequality of inflation which pushed the, the countries like Greece were with the highest inflation to increase debt because the, the, rate, the real rate of interest was lowest. So I have to hurry up. And um, uh, I want to question, now if you look at the, the debt issue, look at the, uh, 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 the figure. The, the debt uh, of the whole uh, European Union, 27, and the debt of the Eurozone, is a lower, lower than the debt of United States. And you must know that the debt of Japan is 200% of GDP, much higher. That's why I am, uh, and I will finish there, it's not a question of sovereign uh, debt crisis. Uh, it's not a question of absolute level of debt, because you have other countries with higher level, which are not in the si similar situation. So it's a really a crisis of the kind of integration uh, which has been built uh, in Europe. It is, not, it is neither the, 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 the question that is said every, every day to make you 
uh, feel um, guilty uh, that we have too many expenses, social expenses, that we can't afford. Uh, the, the dates are clear. The public expenses uh, in Europe have been stable or decreasing. The question is the l uh, lower, uh, very low level of fiscal income behind the debt. It's not, uh, uh, there is no um, uh, also short-term uh, Keynesian kind of recipe uh, because we are confronted to real systemic profound uh, 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 organic uh, question of, uh, uh, of crisis for the, the whole system. And the austerity which is presented as a, uh, an answer, so-called austerity, uh, uh, has already uh, uh, showed this uh, result in Greece. That is, if you introduce austerity policy, you reduce wages, you introduce more flexibility, you reduce the growth. If you reduce the growth, you reduce, you increase the debt, in fact. It's not an issue. You leave everything uh, uh, in the same way. Uh, so, uh, the, the, it's not... Um, uh, so the, the, I would put emphasis and stop there because I have no time to, to, to develop other aspect I wanted. Um, the, the very key, I said that it is a political construction. In a political construction, the question of uh, uh, democracy, legitimation of decision making is very important. And you can take this too. You can take the aspiration which exists uh, of a, a social, a European social model, of a free circulation in Europe, of a, a, a cohesion, uh, a, and so on, and uh, discuss and ask for uh, what is the real cause of the crisis. So that is, there is a campaign now which is developing at the European level um, in order to ask for a public audit on the debt. What does it mean? That is the, uh, the, the demand of a transparent, uh, transparent report on what are the causes of the debt, that is, income uh, and expenses, uh, and discuss all that. What is legitimate and what is not, and what are alternative uh, choices and criteria, that is, priorities and therefore means. Uh, so the, the crisis is not the crisis of the debt, uh, it is a, a debt because of uh, a big crisis of the system used by the system to increase, in fact, the very same uh, policy to go up to the end to uh, what has been the neoliberal uh, program. I, I stop there because uh, of discussion. Okay, thank you and Sonny for so long. Well, thank you so much for this exceptional uh, lecture, and uh, I apologize again for uh, reducing the time, but hopefully we'll have the um, opportunity to raise some issues uh, along the discussion that begins right now. The floor is open. You can just indicate that you want to ask or comment, and we have the opportunity. Uh, yes, please. Uh, I'm just curious, I know a little bit about your work, but what's your view on the role of uh, interest rate policies in EU and US, on the, especially on the class uh, composition, and who, who it affects and how, how do you see it? Perhaps we, we, we look if we have different kind of question, like... Okay, can yes, group, of course, we can uh, do that. Please. Or intervention, I saw. So interest rate policy. Yes. Questions, comments? <coughs> Perhaps um, I'll ask something as well. Uh, I've, I've been recently reading uh, um, Clement's analysis of, of um, uh, the uh, financial crisis, and his thesis is that uh, neoliberalism uh, as such and the, uh, the amounting uh, um, of debt was already a certain response for, uh, to the falling rate of profit. So the political uh, um, campaign of neoliberalism was a response, not the effect. So I was just wondering, what's your view on that? So very briefly on those two aspects, on the uh, interest rate, uh, um, I think 
first that uh, uh, in US uh, the, the Fed had a more subtle uh, policy than the central uh, bank because uh, uh, the European Central Bank because in the, the European treaties uh, officially the uh, status of the central bank is uh, uh, as only one priority against inflation so in fact it's uh, supporting the rentiers uh, here but in practice, uh, uh, the, the, the bank have um, made more subtle, the, the European bank have uh, changed a little bit uh, uh, is, uh, its uh, um, orientation. But on, on rates, the effect of one single European uh, uh, rate of interest uh, has had for, uh, for effect what the, I um, uh, wanted to, uh, to describe just before. That is, the, the credit f to corporates and to households has been very different according to different countries. That is, the countries uh, in uh, Ireland, well, the, 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 the Ireland and Spain <coughs> have had the, the very same kind of growth uh, orientation than in the US that is based on uh, real estate uh, and uh, credit uh, to household uh, like subprime. Huh? And, and so, uh, uh, and uh, uh, but Germany had a, 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 a policy of no real indebtedness, in fact, and its growth has been based on export. And uh, Greece, uh, in, in France, uh, in French, in, in like France, but Greece more than France, has used a, a, a low rate of interest because of inflation to to support uh, a bit of consumption. So in general, I mean, there is a, a very strong inequality of uh, uh, effect of a single rate of interest in, in such a, a situation, according what have been the dominant choices of uh, uh, growth. As far as the question of uh, falling rate of profit, I mean, uh, I said that in the, I agree with the idea that the neoliberal uh, policy was an answer to the falling rate of profits in the 70s. But then the debate is uh, with some uh, Marxists, uh, among some Marxists, uh, the evaluation of what has been the result of those policies and what is uh, now the, the situation. And uh, uh, I share, I don't know if you have uh, the opportunity to read some Michel Lusson, for instance, uh, developments and so on. on the, um, and uh, I have uh, showed here, I've used here some. Uh, uh, curves, which shows, uh, of course, we have to analyze <coughs> how you measure rate of profit because you have different way to do it. If you take in account the financials, pa uh, the financial uh, uh, sector or not, uh, different. I have no time to develop some methodological aspect, which could lead to different results. But all together, all together. Um, uh, I, um, I share the idea with uh, Michel Lusson that uh, the rate of profit has been re-established in the 90s, but not sufficient uh, for in comparison to the kind of rate of profit that you could have in the financial sector. So because of that, and because also of the uh, uh, involvement of China in the whole picture, uh, China, I, with its um, um, transformation uh, with uh, uh, a very low level of, of, of wage uh, uh, in the world competition uh, uh, well was a, 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 an issue which uh, also um, introduced uh, in the competition for profit uh, another new aspect uh, in, in uh, and uh, so you, you can always say that uh, the rate of profit that you have in, in France of, or in, in Slovenia or in, is not enough in comparison to what you could have with uh, China's salaries or with uh, the investment <coughs> in financial system. So you can say that the crisis because the rate of profit is not enough. But in fact, the real uh, issue is the, the, the contradiction of the system with the real uh, impact of financial uh, development, uh, uh, but the, its incapacity, incapacity to stabilize uh, the, the, the whole thing, and uh, 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 not only the incapacity to stabilize, but the, the need, uh, um, 
the need which is uh, not stabilizing need, uh, the need to continue to launch a social uh, <laughs> offensive against uh, the, 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 the wage at the European level, for instance, and it's not only European, uh, in order to reduce uh, again and again and again the, the wage in, in the European countries uh, in the world competition uh, among uh, uh, salaries. Uh, and uh, so uh, on that point of view, <laughs> the, the profit they, they earn is never enough.